Hi there, everybody. This is Moduli Stack, and uh, welcome to the second game from the Berkeley Overmind. Now, there was something I didn't get to mention in that last game, which was that the Overmind was actually moving speed overlords out onto the map to help target spider mines. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. So this game is against a Protoss player. Uh, he is here in the upper left as the orange Protoss, and Overmind is here in the lower right as the brown Zerg, of course. Uh, this bot is called Skynet, and has some pretty interesting strategies, and we are going to see those strategies unfold and see how well he does. Uh, it's very hard for me to avoid using the pronoun he in talking about these bots. Sorry to anybody if that's not acceptable. Probe moving out right now. So I'm going to be watching for the Overmind's reactions here, see if that build order gets adjusted at all response to what he sees. Pylon going down here in the choke of the natural expansion instead of the main base. This says to me he's probably going to try to expand pretty quickly. Possibly uh, with a forge. Probably with a forge, I would say. Meantime, everything looking normal for the Zerg player getting that first Overlord, and I would expect to see a pool immediately afterwards because that is what the Overmind does. The Overmind makes a pool. Makes, Overmind makes a pool after its Overlord. And those early Zerglings are quite helpful in harassment and in defending and in all that great jazz, even though it might not necessarily be the absolute best way to play. Protoss has put down a forge. And scouting probe is uh, managing to find his opponent. On the other hand, Sparky the Wonder Drone still does not know what Skynet is doing. It's unfortunate that we haven't gotten to see some really good stuff out of Sparky the Wonder Drone because he certainly deserves his name. A um, couple of drones moving out here. Uh, Overmind getting a little bit distracted by this scouting drone. <laughs> kind of funny. Let's see. Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Gets off one shot. Yeah. Uh, definitely good dodging behavior here from, from Skynet, who is getting two photon cannons at his naturals choke and this will prevent any quick zergling attacks and that's really nice these six zerglings that are going to be coming out any second now uh, will be pretty much useless and in the meantime protoss is free to just make probes and fast expand that was interesting he queued two probes and then canceled one of them i guess even computers can misclick uh, these zerglings are going to go after this easy target that probe and now uh, move out across the map i guess Idle drone. Always a surprise to see an idle drone from a computer, but I would not expect that drone to stay idle for very long. Second hatch is going down. Uh, Sparky the Wonder Drone just kind of hanging out here. Not sure exactly why. Just poking in to make sure that forge is still there. <clears throat> and a lot of minerals building up for the Protoss, so I would expect a fast expansion to be coming along. Oh, Sparky commits suicide. Nexus goes down, and... Bunch of Zerglings going to come in. Are they going to see the cannons and retreat? No, they're going to try to... What are they trying to do? It's not quite clear. Maybe trying to run past. Ooh, nice sort of lucky couple of cannon shots get that last Zergling. So is not even going to be able to scout in here. Of course, not much to scout at this time. Oof. Uh, second hatchery almost finished. Starting to collect gas now. Got a lot of minerals built up, but not a lot of larva at this point. Gateway going down for the Protoss player. So this is starting to look like a pretty normal fast expansion for the Protoss. We might see some kind of Bisu build, and so I'm not just alienating people with weird terminology. Bisu is one of the most impressive players in the Brood War scene right now. Of course, if you played Brood War, you know this. Um, but uh, I'm just just gonna just gonna repeat that anyway. Bisu, uh, really astonishingly good player, and he completely revolutionized the way that you play against uh, Zerg as Protoss by doing these fast expansion builds, usually into fast Corsair, and then following that up with Dark Templars or something cool. What was that sound? Something just died. Oh my god, this probe just got a drone kill. That is pretty annoying. Of course, the thing is, in a game against humans, if you get a drone kill with your probe, you've pretty much won the game already because your opponent is just going to be so blindingly angry at you that he's not going to be playing well. I would not expect to see the same kind of flustered behavior from the Overmind, though, so <clears throat> should be fine. Sunken Colony finally takes out that probe. Drone just kind of looking around before it goes back to work. 
second gas going up. Overmind, uh, not mining gas right at this moment. I think I mentioned this in the previous game, but Overmind does seem to be pretty flexible about taking guys off of gas, taking drones, taking drones off of gas, not guys, drones, uh, or putting them back on when necessary. And right now, clearly uh, wants to make a lot of drones. So also to afford these three sunken colonies, which are quite pricey. Zealots coming out for the Protoss has also gotten his gas and cybernetics core and ooh, um, yeah, gotten a quick Stargate. So we are gonna see some kind of Bisu type build. Now, the thing is that, uh, so I didn't quite see, but it looks like this Overlord did spot that Stargate. And the Overmind actually knows a little bit about how to respond to Stargates. It is doing the following, Evolution Chamber, and uh, creep colony. So the lair is pretty late. I'm gonna just say that up front. This lair is kinda late. And when you have a late lair or a very early Corsair, uh, you do usually want a spore colony because the thing is that Zerg really otherwise doesn't have any anti-air. You see that Overmind is actually pulling his overlords back and they're gonna all gravitate around this spore colony for defense, which is exactly what you wanna do if there's a Corsair coming out you're unprepared for, because otherwise you can lose all your overlords. So, good move there from the Overmind. Has not gotten, Skynet has not gotten a second gas, just getting a second gas now. Also putting down another gateway and a Citadel of a Dune. Hmm, wonder if he could be planning for some kind of a Zealot leg speed attack. Because he is getting the plus one attack upgrade here, which is very good for Zealots against Zerglings, and is a good use of that Forge which otherwise would just make the two cannons and then sit there for a while. This Corsair is gonna poke in and out. Might see that spore colony, definitely sees the spore colony now. Doesn't stop him from going back in and getting shot again twice more. Going back, oh, he's gonna come in for another look, why not? Gets shot again by the spore colony and this pilot did not learn about spore colonies very well in his Corsair pilot training school. The Spire is on the way though, so that is, has been scattered. Any more Corsairs coming out? No. Third gateway, though, uh, and a fourth gateway, and a Templar Archives. So we might see some Psionic Storm from Skynet, which would be pretty awesome, uh, because a bot doing Psionic Storm could clearly do very well. On the other hand, um, it's not going to be out for a little while. You do have to research Psionic Storm, and he needs to build those Templar, which are very gas expensive. In the meantime, these Mutalisks they're going to be out soon. This Spire is more than two-thirds done. A lot more drones coming out for the Overmind. A lot of minerals and gas saved up to make a ton of mutalisks. What he is a little bit short on, though, is larva. Spire is almost done. A lot of zealots out. Uh, these zealots with plus one attack might even do pretty well against these sunkens. A couple of probes here for reasons I cannot quite fathom. Uh, not using the rally point on that particular gateway, which is fine. Why do you need rally points if you have 800 APM? Or, excuse me, 1100 APM. Overmind is actually lagging behind right now. Templar Archives is out, and are we seeing some Templar? We are seeing some high Templar, but what we're not seeing is Cyanic Storm being researched. So, might be thinking about a push with Archons, and kind of like that. I kind of like a big plus one Zealot Archon push as an idea. So, Mulisks are out now, though, and this is going to be trouble for Skynet, because as we've seen in the previous game, unbelievably good with Mutalisks. The Overmind is. I'm just putting all of my words in the wrong order. They're going to pick away at this pylon, and they're going to decide, oh, look at that. Look at how quickly they retargeted onto the High Templar. That is really impressive. Um, these Mutalists, again, they do target based on how expensive their targets are and how valuable they are, as well as how easy they are to kill. I'm not sure exactly why they're targeting the Citadel of the Dune, but it looks like they are gonna manage to kill it. Um, although they go up here to get that other High Templar. But look, he snuck a couple of other High Templar off to morph two Archons. So there are two Archons around. Archon's quite good against Mutalists, but that's because Archons do splash damage against Mutalisks. And the problem is these Mutalisks are doing a great job spreading out, picking at the Templar Archives a little bit, um, are going to run away from this Archon until there are more Mutalisks around. But 
The thing is, these Moodleists are spread so well, it's not clear that this Archon is going to be that great against them. Picking away at some Zealots here. These are basically free kills, so why not? A lot of, lot of Glaive bounces going on. And all the probes have been pulled away from this base, which is really smart by Skynet. Or by Skynet's programmers. Okay, but here, now there's enough Mutalists, they're going to feel confident engaging these Archons. And look at them darting in and out. Very hard for the Archons to use their splash damage. Very hard to kill more Mutalists. Or hit more Mutalists. At... Let me try saying that again. It's very hard to hit more than one Mutalisk at once. He does lose two Mutalisks, but two Mutalisks for two Archons. That is a good trade for the Zerg player. And this third base is up and running perfectly with the gas on the way. Drones going onto gas just in time. So, again, perfect macro for me over my almost zero gas right now. Just keeps making those Mutalisks and uh, probably even has some upgrades on the way. Yeah, there's the Carapace upgrade on the way. And he's just completely shut down any plans that Skynet had. Uh, Skynet is continuing to use these uh, gateways, getting uh, more Templar out but just losing so much, losing all these zealots. Uh, he did make a pretty big blunder in pulling all these zealots back away from these photon cannons because obviously zealots do not help that much against mutalisks because they cannot fly. Anyway, Overmind taking this game in a really decisive fa fashion, a really decisive fashion with these early mutalisks. Uh, photon cannon building here, but it's really not going to make any difference. Zerg running comfortably on three bases probably will take more soon. And Protoss will never get control of uh, this base again. So all of these buildings are eventually toast. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this, uh, this follow-up face stomping by the Overmind. And I bet that you're all asking the question, well, how does the Overmind do against humans? And that is why for the next two games, I'm going to be bringing you some games against the uh, now famous Oriol Vignals. So stay tuned for that. The Overmind versus humans right after this break. Or since you're on YouTube, right after you click play on the next video. Uh, this is Modulized Act, and I will see you then.